Okay, so first up on the list, we got an accessory called the Black Cape. This is a rare accessory and can be bought from an NPC called Porus, who's located at a marine fortress in the first sea. This accessory costs a total of 50,000 belly, and the level requirement to purchase it is 50. And what this cape gives you is a plus 100 energy, plus 100 health, and plus 5% damage. Overall, a kinda decent accessory if you are a beginner, but you should probably switch to a different accessory as soon as possible, because this is the first accessory in the whole game. So next on the list, we got the Swordsman Hat. The Swordsman Hat is a rare accessory and can be bought from an NPC called Hassan, who's located at the desert in the first sea. It costs a total of 150,000 belly and you need to have at least 300 stat points in your sword to buy it. Along with the flash step ability, air jump, and aura. Which all you can buy from the ability teacher on the snow island. It gives you a simple plus 10% sword damage. And for first C users, this is going to come in handy a butt ton. It's more of a beginner accessory that you want to buy only in the first C if you're a sword main to start off with. If you're a fruit main, then there's not really a point in buying this. Overall, a kind of decent accessory, but you want to move on to the next one as soon as possible. Next up on the list, we got the pink coat code accessory. What this accessory gives you is plus 200 health, plus 10% gun damage, and has a 5-10% to chance of being dropped from the boss after you kill him. The Don Swan boss spawns every 30 minutes in the large building in the middle of the prison, so if you want to grind him, you know where he's at now. Overall, this accessory is pretty good for gun mains, and it has pretty decent health boost for the first scene. Next on the list, we got an accessory called a Tomo Ring. It can be bought from an NPC called Yoshi, who's located at the second island of Skylands, and this place is where the Sky Warriors spawn costs a total of 500,000 belly and it requires the user to have at least 200 melee stats before you're able to purchase it. So what this accessory does is it buffs your blast fruit damage by a whole 10%. And if you start off with a really good blast fruit, then this accessory is gonna come in real handy. Next up on the list, we got the code accessory. This is a rare accessory and can be obtained with a 10% chance after defeating the Vice Admiral boss, who is located at Marine Fortress in the Big Tower. So what this code gives you is plus 200 energy and plus 10% melee damage. And the pretty cool thing about this code is it actually changes depending on whether you're a pirate or a marine. If you're a pirate, then you get a huge white beard skull, and if you are a marine, you get a huge marine logo on the back of the code. And this accessory is really good for low level players, but I don't really recommend grinding it because it only has a 10% drop chance. And another thing that's actually not known about this code is it actually grants the user 50% more height when using the air jump ability, and this can come in real handy when you're trying to get to higher places. Overall, a really solid accessory for the first seat. Next on the list, we got the Cool Shades accessory. This is a rare accessory and can be obtained with a 1-2% to chance after defeating the cyborg boss who's located at the fountain city in the first sea. And this accessory in my opinion is one of the most badass looking accessories in the game and its stats definitely complement it. It gives you plus 100 energy, plus 100 health, plus 7.5% overall damage and plus 17.5% overall movement speed buff. And it looks super badass, I mean they're literally sunglasses. Who doesn't like sunglasses? And a good thing about this accessory is that it's really good and goes well with any build. So you can be a sword main, gun main, or a fruit main. And it works well because it buffs your overall damage, not just from one category. But the cons are that it has low health and energy boost, and it's kind of difficult to obtain. But for getting it in the first C, honestly, I'm not complaining. Next up on the list, we got Usopp's hat. Usopp's hat is a rare accessory, and you can get it by defeating three players who are similar level to you. But you have to be a pirate that has at least over 250,000 bounty. And that's kind of hard to get if you're in the first C. And what this hat gives you is a plus 7.5% damage when you're using guns. And a 15% attack cooldown reduction for all guns. Which means you can use all of your gun abilities 15% faster. But keep in mind it's only good for low level gun users. And good for newer players who don't have a lot of accessories. Bad thing about this hat, it's not really suited towards blast fruits or swords. And it's kind of a really bad accessory if you're a more experienced player with more accessories to choose from. So wear this one at your own risk. Next up, we got the Marine Cap Accessory. This is a rare accessory and you can obtain it by killing a pirate as a Marine when your honor is over 250,000. And this is really similar to the Usopp's Cap Accessory. It gives you plus 7.5% sword and gun damage and 10% cooldown reduction for guns and swords. So it's basically a better version of the old accessory. And it's really easy to get because most players in the game actually choose pirates. So if you choose a marine, then you can find a butt ton of players to kill. And it's good for sword and gun users who are in the first C. So moving on, we got the black spiky coat accessory. This is a rare accessory and it can be obtained with a 10% chance after defeating the Jeremy boss who's located at the Kingdom of Rose in the second C. This coat gives you plus 200 energy, plus 200 health, and plus 7.5% overall damage. And a good thing about this is it's basically compatible with any build, so it doesn't matter what you main in the game. But the bad thing about it is it's drop chance, and everyone knows bosses take a really long time to spawn in, so this one's gonna be really hard to grind if you wanna get it. 
Next on the list, we got the Chopper Hat. The Chopper Hat is a rare accessory and it can be obtained with a 20% chance after defeating a Sea Beast. A Sea Beast is a boss that has a chance to spawn while traveling in a boat in the water in the second sea or above. And you'll definitely recognize it as soon as it spawns in. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's literally a Sea Beast. And the effects from this accessory are plus 3% blocks for damage, 15% blocks for attack cooldown reduction, and a 10% defense against any blocks fruits attacks. And most people in the game are actually fruit main, so this accessory is going to help you out a butt ton in the second see. But the bad thing is that it's not really compatible for sword or gun mains, and on top of that it does not increase your health, energy, or movement speed. So overall a pretty average accessory for the second C. Next up we got the top hat, and this is really similar to the chopper hat from before. This is a rare accessory and it can be obtained with a 20% chance after defeating a sea beast. And you all know what sea beasts are from the previous one. This hat gives you a plus 3% melee damage, and gives you a 10% attack cooldown reduction for all your abilities. I mean, that's pretty useful. And it gives you plus 10% defense against sword attacks. Overall a pretty solid accessory. Moving on, we got the warrior helmet, yet another head accessory. Bartolo, who you get the quest from, is located next to the Blocks Fruit Dealer in the cafe, and he can only give the quest to you if you're above level 850. This accessory actually looks pretty cool. I mean, it's literally made out of gold. It buffs your melee and sword damage by 12.5% and gives you a 5% melee and sword attack cooldown reduction, which means you can use your sword abilities and your melee abilities a bit quicker. Overall, I don't think this accessory is that good because you have to complete a whole quest to get it. Next up on the list, we got the Dark Coat accessory, and this is actually the first mythical accessory that's on this list. And it can be obtained with a 2% chance after defeating the Dark Beard boss who spawns after the Fist of Darkness is placed on the Dark Arena in the second seat. Damn, that's a lot of stuff to do just for an accessory. It gives you plus 600 energy, plus 600 health, and plus 15% blocks for damage buff. And also looks really badass. And in my opinion, it's one of the best looking accessories in the whole game. But you do have to kill the Darkbeard boss for this, and that is no easy task. But overall, I would still say it's a really solid accessory. But I don't know if I'm gonna be fighting the Darkbeard boss just to get the accessory. Next up, we got the Swan Glasses. And this is a legendary accessory that you can get with a 2.5% chance after defeating the Dawn swan boss who's located at the swan room in the second sea and this is actually a part of the quest to getting to the third sea it gives you plus 250 energy plus 250 health plus 8 percent overall damage plus 8 percent defense against all attacks plus 8 percent attack cooldown reduction so you can use all your abilities 8 percent faster and a 25 percent movement speed increase and damn that's a lot of buffs just for one accessory but the cons are definitely that it's super difficult to obtain i mean a 2.5 percent drop chance bro you would literally have to kill the boss hundreds of times to get it. So if you're grinding this one, make sure you actually get the game pass because it'll make your life 10 times easier. Next up, we got the Zebra Cap, and this one's also a legendary accessory that can be obtained after defeating the Order boss who's located at the Hot and Cold Island in the second sea. You actually need to deal at least 10% damage to him for it to count that you defeated him. And the effects for this accessory are plus 500 energy, plus 100 health, plus 10% sword damage, and a 15% blocks fruit attack cooldown reduction. And the drop chance is literally 100%, so you won't have to grind this a lot to get it. And the hardest part about this is definitely actually defeating the boss itself, so make sure when you do the quest to kill the boss, you actually get some friends to help you. It's an overall a super solid accessory for the second C. Next up we got the Ghoul Mask accessory and this is a rare accessory that can be bought from the El Perro NPC who's located at the cursed ship in the second C. And the cost of this mask is a simple 50 ectoplasm and the effects for this are pretty decent. Plus 500 energy, 10% life leech on all melee attacks against players, 2.5% life leech on melee attacks against NPCs and plus 35% movement speed. And for you guys who are wondering what life leech is, it means you heal back the amount of damage you do. Overall, this mask is really solid and is mostly used by people that are farming with the Buddha fruit. So overall, this accessory is mainly used for grinding, and the only con I would say is, is that it does not initially increase your health damage, but that doesn't even matter too much because you heal back a lot. Alrighty, moving on we got the blue spiky coat. It's a rare accessory that can be obtained with a chance after defeating the cursed captain boss, who has a 1 out of 3 chance of spawning every night on the cursed ship, which is located in the second sea. This accessory grants the user 500 extra energy, plus 250 health, and plus 7.5% overall damage. But you only have a 1.5% chance of getting it dropped from the cursed captain, so you're gonna have to grind this guy a lot if you want to get it. Okay, so the next one on this list is called the red spiky coat, and the way you get it is exactly the same from the cursed captain boss. This one gives you plus 250 energy, plus 500 health, and plus 7.5% damage. But this one actually has a 2.5% drop chance, so it's slightly easier to get than the one before. So next on the list, we got the Valkyrie Helmet. It's a legendary accessory that you can get after defeating the Rip Indra boss by dealing at least 10%
and damage to it. It gives you 600 extra energy, 600 extra health, and plus 15% sword damage. And you have a 100% chance of getting it after defeating the boss, so you don't need to grind that much to get it. But the boss is really difficult to defeat, literally the hardest boss in the game. So moving on, we got the bandana, and this bandana actually has three different forms. There's a red, green, and black bandana, and they give you the exact same stats. You can obtain it with a chance after defeating the elite pirate. This accessory gives you a total of 750 energy, plus 10% melee sword and gun damage and a plus 80 percent movement speed you literally become the flag and that's the main use for this if you just want to get faster and this is definitely the accessory that you want to look for it's literally one of the best for speed in the whole game but keep in mind you only have a 50 percent drop chance so you're gonna have to grind it a few times to get it next on the list we got the hunter's cape and guess what this one also has three different colors red green and black this one gives you a plus 750 health plus 10 percent melee sword and gun damage and plus 80 percent movement speed the exact same stats as the bandana but in my opinion, the bandana looks a lot cooler. Next up, we got the pretty helmet. And you can get this by defeating five elite pirates and then and talking to the Leuven NPC who's located at the cafe at the castle on the sea in the third sea. This accessory gives you a plus 250 energy, plus 500 health, plus 10% melee damage, and plus 12.5% defense against all melee attacks, and a plus 50% movement speed on top of that. And this one is really recommended for Buddha users. Overall, a really decent accessory if you're trying to grind up to max level. Next up on the list, we got the jaw shield accessory. And you can get this after completing five quests from the player hunter and then talking to the Takamoro NPC, who's located at the stairs to the left when you enter the castle on the sea. And a pretty cool thing about it is that the Captain Elephant NPC also wears this accessory but he doesn't have any of the buffs and does not drop it the effects of this accessory are plus 500 energy plus 250 health plus 12.5 percent melee damage plus 10 percent defense against all melee attacks and a plus 50 percent movement speed and it might be the best accessory for buddha players in my opinion next up on the list we got the musketeer hat and you can get it by completing the citizen quest which you get from the citizen npc located in the mansion on the floating turtle island which is in the third sea this accessory gives you a plus 12.5 percent increase in sword and gun damage as well as a 12.5 cooldown reduction for guns and swords. Overall, a decent accessory if you're a sword or gun main. Next up, we got the pilot helmet, and this is a rare accessory and can get it after defeating the stone boss at Port Town on the third sea. This accessory gives you a whopping 130% increase in your movement speed, as well as 10% faster health regeneration and plus 250 health and energy. And this accessory is the best speed accessory in the whole game. And that's the main use of this accessory, just to make you run as fast as the flash. Fastest Next accessory on the list is called Lay, and you can get it with a chance after defeating the Kilo Admiral boss who's located at the Great Tree in the second seat. This accessory has literally just one effect, it just increases your health regeneration by a whole 50%. But the drop chance is literally only 10 to 15, which means you need to grind this boss a butt ton of times before you get it. But overall, a really solid accessory, and if you pair it with the Phoenix Fruit's healing ability, you'll literally be unkillable. But other than increasing your regeneration speed, it doesn't really change anything with your health, energy, damage, defense defense or movement speed so it's kind of a mid accessory but really good if you know how to use it next on the list we got the bear ears accessory and this is a rare accessory that can be obtained by rolling a random surprise from the death king for 50 bones this accessory gives you a total of plus 500 energy and plus 10 percent defense against all attacks next we got the golden sun hat and the way you get it is the exact same as the previous one by rolling with 50 bones this accessory gives you a total of plus 500 health and plus 10 percent damage so the next accessory is called the holy crown and you can obtain this after killing the soul reaper boss it gives you plus 500 energy plus 500 health plus 8 percent damage plus 8 percent defense against all attacks and plus 5 percent energy regeneration and you have a hundred percent chance of dropping it after defeating the boss but it is kind of difficult to obtain not because the boss is super difficult to kill or anything but just to spawn in the boss you need to do a bunch of grinding Moving on, we got one of my favorite accessories, the Pale Scarf. You can get it by defeating the Cake Prince or the Doe King. And both of these bosses are incredibly difficult to spawn in, so you're gonna have to do a lot of grinding to even fight them. It gives you a plus 15% block speed and sword damage increase, and it gives you two whole extra observation dodges. And next one is the best part. It increases your observation hockey's range by 10 times, which means you can literally see 10 times further than you would normally be able to see. And this accessory also has a 100% drop chance, so if you even fight the boss and deal 10% damage, you'll definitely get it.